Hi, good morning. This is Maxim Bergeraud of 100 Things to Do with Red Hat Management Products. Um, today is the first in a series around content views and filters in Satellite 6. Um, today, we're going to look at creating just a simple content view. And in the upcoming videos, we're going to uh, dive a little deeper and explore some of the other concepts that are related to content view creation and publishing and uh, promotion in Satellite. So to dive straight in, um, a content view, which we sometimes call a CV, um, is Satellite's way of allowing you to select what content you want to provide to your systems. And in short, it's basically um, a bundle of repositories that you can optionally filter and that is versioned. So basically you create a content view, um, you publish it, at that point it becomes a version 1.0 and that 1.0 is from that point on immutable as you move it through dev, QA and production. Um, we will look into lifecycle environments um, like dev QA in production in, a, in, an, uh, in an upcoming episode of this series as well. Um, so for today, we'll just look at creating a content view, adding some repositories, adding some filters, and then publish it, publishing the, the content view into the lifecycle environment called library, which is um, the place where everything always begins. And from there, uh, we would be able to promote it into dev QA in production, for example. So let me switch over to my satellite um, for um, sh in order to be able to show you some stuff. Um, let me switch to the other tab. There we are. So we log into the satellite um, using the admin account, which is not what you should do, but for demo purposes, it's fine. Um, I go to the content tab and to the content views menu item. And there you see that I already have a couple of content views created, but for the demo, we're going to create a new one. And we're going to create, call that new content view. We're going to call that CV example rel six base. And as an description, we're going to call that um, example content view containing the basic repositories for deploying a rel six machine. Now, this is not going to be a composite content view. We'll talk about composite content views in a later episode. This is just going to be a normal rel six content view with just RPMs in there. So we're going to save that. And at this point, we have created an empty content view. And the first thing, first thing we need to do is add some repositories. So um, in order to be able to use Puppet later on and, and things like that, we're going to add the uh, Red Hat Satellite 6.2 tools channel for RHEL 6. So that's that one. We're going to add that. Click the button. Uh, we're going to add the RHEL 6 server repository because we want you know, at, at the end of the day, we're installing an operating system. That is that one. So we're adding that one as well. Click the button again. And in order to um, be able to deploy systems from this content view, from my capsules, I need to add the Kickstart repository. And let's add the one for RHEL 6.8 to the content view as well. If I do not add the Kickstart repository, um, the Kickstart repository will not get synced to my capsules. And that means my capsules will not be available for kickstarting from. So if you wanna kickstart from a capsule, add your Kickstart repositories to your content view. Now, if you've counted with me, you probably have remembered that I've just added three repositories to my content view. And the next thing I need to do is uh, filter this content. Now, let's go to yum content filters here. And as you see, no filters as of yet. I'm going to click new filter. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add all of the packages that do not have errata at this point to my content view. So add, I'm going to call this filter all packages without errata. And this is going to be a package filter. Uh, we have several other types. This is currently called a package filter. We'll go into the other types um, at some later stage, but there is package, package group, erratum by ID, and errata by date and time. So we'll get to those later. For now, we're going to just, we're just going to add um, all the packages without errata. So this is, so the content type we're filtering here is package. We go to include, and as the description, we're going to add the same as the name, all packages without errata. I'm going to save this. And the only thing I need to do to successfully create this specific filter is to check this little box here to include all RPMs without errata. And then I'll uncheck the Kickstart repository from this specific filter. Now, the default for a new filter is to affect all repositories. But um, I do not want to filter my Kickstart repositories in any way. So I'm going to uncheck that one, click Update Repositories, and there's my first filter. 
Now, as a second filter, I'm going to include all of the errata that have been issued up until November 22nd of 2016. That is a fairly arbitrary date, um, but I'm going to use that for now to just show you how you would normally create a content view that uh, you could use to do uh, monthly patching, for example. So I'm adding all errata until November 22nd, and in December, you could add all errata unt uh, until December 22nd, and then in January of 2016, you could add all errata until January 22nd, and, and so forth and so forth. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add errata. So for the content type, I'm going to select errata by date and type, and I'm going to include errata again. I'm going to use the same description um, as I use for the name, so all route until November 22nd. I'm going to save this. There we go. Uh, again, I'm going to make this not apply to the Kickstart repository just because I don't want any filtering on there whatsoever, just to be sure. And I'm going to select as an end date of this filter, I'm going to select November 22nd. So that is, we have a nice, I'm not sure if that's visible in the video, but we have a nice um, calendar widget there. Uh, it says 22 November 2016. I'm going to save that. I'm, I'm, I would be able to select um, different types of errata. So I, I could say, for example, I do not want any enhancement in, in here, uh, but in this case, I want uh, do want enhancements. I can select um, updated on or issued on as the, the type of date I'm, I'm looking at. And I give a start date as well, but I don't, I don't think that makes a lot of sense in this case. So just as an end date, I'm gonna select 22 November, 2016, and that is going to include all of the errata that were issued between uh, the release of the repository as a whole and November 22nd. So I'm going to save this. And as you can see right now, I have now um, two errata. Uh, I'm sorry, I have two filters. One says all packages without errata and the other says all errata until November 22nd. Um, so I'm, you can also add Puppet modules, Docker content, OS3 content and things like that. I'm not going to go into there. We'll look at those in a later episode. Um, now we move over here, back to the versions tab. And the final thing I need to do in order to publish this content view is click publish new version and i need to give a description now as a description here i what i usually do is i um take the description of the latest filter i added um, or if i add more filters i might want to add all the description of the filters i added um, as a description of the new version of the content view um, if i press save here now and uh, i'm not going to wait until that's done because it, it takes quite a while um a couple of minutes at least um this creates the new content view in a life cycle in a life cycle environment we call library. And from there, as I said before, we can then promote to dev QA and production, um, whatever you want. So I'm assuming the life cycle environment part is fairly straightforward. If not, please leave a comment below and we'll look into life cycle environments at a, at a later uh, version of this uh, series of screencasts. So I'm going to click save here and then we move back um, to my presentation for the recap. So there we go. We go back to the presentation for the recap. There we are. Let me enlarge this a little bit. So there we are. Um, so as a recap of creating content views, um, you can add as many repositories as you like. If you want to add just a single one, that's fine. If you add 15, that's fine as well. Um, please include the Kickstart repositories if you use capsules, especially because without adding them to um, the content view, they won't be available in your capsules. Um, now, we will look into this in a little bit more detail in a later episode. We'll look into advanced content filtering. But just keep in mind for now that for the majority, for the vast majority of cases, um, repositories, especially repositories, um, if, you, if you handle repositories with errata information, just include all packages without errata first and then start adding them by date range or by errata ID. Try to combine as few types of rules as you can. So don't try and mix, uh, include and exclude rules or errata rules and package rules if you don't have to, because it will make things more complicated. And as we all know, um, the simplest solution is often the best one. So just use the include filters as much as you can. Um, if you are using include filters by date range, you can then selectively exclude individual errata by ID if you need to. And we'll show that in a, in a later version of this, a later episode of this uh, series of screencasts. Um, if you are adding filters to your repositories, look at the affected repositories tab to make sure you're uh, applying the filters to the correct repositories. And that was it. Um, if you find this useful, please look at the, the links below, click the subscribe button. Um, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. Um, the link to my Twitter handle was on the first slide um, on this um, 
on this presentation. And uh, I hope to see you guys um, in a couple of days when we publish part two, which will be about advanced filtering of content views. For now, thanks and goodbye.